Hey y'all, just some kind of catfish. I don't know how well you can see me right now because we're right here at first light. It's still a little bit dark out here, so hopefully I'm showing up on the camera there, but I'm just now getting set up. I am fishing another creek mouth today. If you watched my last video, which I actually filmed yesterday, I was positioned at a creek mouth and had some success, got on some good blue cats. And that creek, particular creek mouth was about 30 feet deep. So I'm fishing a different creek mouth here today, but this one is 32 feet. And so we're gonna give a chance here and see how it goes. Um, like I said, it's first light here. It's about 6 a.m. I'm getting a little bit later start than I wanted, but I've got anchored down here and I'm going to be suspend fishing again today. I'll just have my baits directly under the kayak, a couple feet off the bottom, but using white bass again. I've still got some uh, left from my previous trip. So I'm gonna get these cut up, get them down in the water. We'll see if we can get on some fish. All right, y'all, there's the first bait, a white bass head. That's one of the bigger ones I caught the other night so if we get a fish on that bait it's probably going to be a good size fish this time of year you know summertime water's warm their metabolism's high I like to throw out some bigger baits and that's what we're going to do today it's going to be a big bait kind of day I'm going to of course have the big head on that rod this rod here, I'm gonna put another head on. This is gonna be the, just a smaller head though. One of the smaller white bass I got. Same thing, hooking it the same way as the other one. I just kinda go up under the gill plate there, out through a nostril. And we just drop it straight down under the kayak. Currents. We got pretty good flow out here. We had a lot of rain over the this past weekend, and so TVA has been spilling up at Fort Loudon Dam. Now I'm fishing pretty good ways downstream from there, so no safety issues at all. But uh, you know, it's a noticeable current. My lines, even with eight ounce sinkers that I'm using today, I don't know if you can see because it's still kind of dark, but my lines kind of out just a little bit so you know you just have to that's fine as far as the spin fishing goes but you just have to kind of compensate for it if you want your baits at a particular depth and you know i generally like my baits somewhere within two to three feet of the bottom um, definitely no more than higher up than five feet off the bottom but really i like them about as close down to the bottom as what i can get without being on the bottom if that makes sense all right y'all there's that final bait just a big hunk of white bass now on these body sections you can see there, I trim that fin off. I take some kitchen shears and I cut that off because sometimes I feel like that interferes with the barb there if that kind of flares up after the fish hits it. So I like to trim that off and you know, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, like I said, it's still dark, but I don't hook these white bass very deep on the body sections. You just don't have to. The white bass is a very tough bait. Uh, they're not a smaller fish getting down there gnawing on it. It's not gonna rip it off the hook if you just kind of just kind of, uh, you know, do a very shallow uh, penetration of the hook there. So we got that on there. Let me drop it down. Get this bait set and we'll be fishing. That action right here on that rod, look at that. That's on that, that's on that smaller head. Oh, now he's going to take off. He's going to take off now. I'm fiddling with the camera. There he goes. I got him. Yeah, I don't feel like a bad fish either now. Yeah, that's solid. That's solid. This guy be a flathead, y'all. This guy be a flathead. He hasn't rolled the first time. I mean, look at that. He's still just pulling. <laughs> I ain't getting my hopes up though until I get him in here. As y'all saw what happened to me a couple videos ago. That last week I was up there in that secondary channel, had a massive thump, rod bent over. I fought that fish for like three minutes. I need to just let it go. You know, I've said that before in other videos. They just Sometimes I don't think they get the hook. Their jaws are so strong they clamp down on the bait and could hold on to it. That rod right there got hit. That rod got hit, I don't know. 
if it was another fish or if it's just this one getting in it. <laughs> I just lost all the ground I had made on him. Man. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, we got to be two, three, four minutes into this fight here. And he has still got that rod just buried. Just buried. That rain's coming down, but I'm just going to have to go with it with these cameras. They're uncovered. I don't use waterproof cases on the cameras because you can't hear the audio when I do. But I can see that fish on my graph right now as I'm fighting him. He's still on the bottom. <laughs> He's under me, but... I ain't, I ain't got him off the bottom yet. I wish that rain would just hold off, just hold off just a few minutes. I really want to get all the action and get some pictures of this fish. It's still dark out here. I don't know what time it is. It's 6.48 right now. I got on the water. I got down here set up right at 6. But it's still kind of dark just from because it's cloudy. Man, this fish is still taking drag this far into the fight. <laughs> I may have to make this one fish the whole video as long as this fight's taken. <laughs> this one ate that white bass head though. Now, this was the smaller head there that I showed you. Or tried to show you anyway. I don't know if it was light enough yet to get it on video. I like them head pieces, man. I don't care what bait I'm using. I catch more big fish on the head section of a bait than anything else. So I gotta do some finagling here on this, y'all. First off, let's lose that rod holder. Let's get it out of the way. That's the nice thing about them Scotty rod holders. And why I like them versus some of the other rod holders on the market, because I can move it in a second and get it completely out of my way for landing big tanks like this flathead that we got here. Look at that, guys. Buddy, that's a solid fish, man. That's a solid fish. All right, y'all. Let me hold this fish up right quick. Look at that. Look at that. That's a good fish, ain't it? Look at that. The rain's coming down. I'm probably gonna have to, I'm gonna have to cover up these cameras real fast. <laughs> Look at that. Man, that's a good fish. I'm gonna get him on the. I'm gonna get him some pictures here on this measuring board. Get some links, but this rain's coming down pretty hard. I gotta cover up these cameras right quick. I'll be back with you here in just a second. Well, guys, unfortunately, I had some technical difficulties with that rear camera. I got home to upload the footage, and it said I had a corrupted video file. So I don't know if that was due to the camera, the memory card, or just the fact it got soaking wet out there in the rain. But I lost all of that footage from me fighting that fish, and I lost the release shot. And I hate that because it was an awesome fight from start to finish. That flathead ended up going a little over 42 inches, and it was a fun fight, man. I enjoyed it, and I wish I could have showed it to you in this video. But I ended up sticking it out there for a few more hours. Caught some blue catch just kind of sporadically throughout the morning. Nothing real consistent, nothing real big, but that flathead was definitely the highlight of my day. I hope you all enjoyed this video anyway. I'm going to try to get these camera issues sorted out and do a little bit better in the next one. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.